Finding an art style is one of the greatest challenges we face as artists. It could take months or years to create, and sometimes it feels impossible to find a clear direction. But I recently came across an activity created by Kelsey Rodriguez that gave me hope. She outlined a clear process for finding an art style that feels authentic to you, and it seems incredibly helpful. So today, I'm taking on the challenge of finding my art style. Let's see how it goes. Kelsey explains the first step is collecting inspiration. She says this inspiration should be free-flowing, to not worry too much about what the medium is or what's being shown. The only thing we're worried about here is if it calls or interests you in some way. Pinterest is like my go-to place for all things art inspiration. Just off the bat, I thought it'd be good to just kind of see what catches my eye. I am really drawn to this painting. Things that have people, things that kind of depict stories or life. I think I'm gonna save this. Oh, this is really interesting. I think that's interesting, but I like it, but I don't love it. So I think I'm gonna just only include things that I feel like I really, really love that I'm just very excited about. Oh, this is so cool. I love the perspective in this. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Let's go back over here. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, I'm very drawn to this, the colors, what it's depicting. I find myself also really interested in surrealism and just this, just the way that like combining everyday human life things with things that are not so realistic or practical and how that can actually make a very real statement about real life. Well, things that are surreal can also make a real statement about real life. I don't know if that makes sense. An artist I really admire is Vincent Valdez. He creates some stunning painting. Not only are they stunning just in terms of, of the quality of his style and how real they look, but also um, the content as well is, is super powerful. Shama Golden's work is also um, one that I've been inspired by lately. I was introduced to her work in college and something about the, the color she uses and the way that she draws nature, it's all very, very beautiful. And each one, you can tell there's a story with it as well. Dominic Baden has a really interesting style. He, it's a, kind of like a mix between illustration and in some of the most recent works, I see that there's also kind of an element of, of paper collage mixed in with there as well. After collecting inspiration, it's time to create some connections. Kelsey explains some helpful methods for creating connections between all the inspiration you find, such as if you had a gallery of all these pieces, what would you title it? Okay, so now that we have all of our inspiration here, it's time to create some connections. There's a lot of different things going on in here, lots of different types of art, lots of different subject matter. We have some, you know, illustration and paintings, and then we also have some more um, abstract art as well. I think a way that I can try to create some of the connections are kind of based on groupings. So perhaps first I'll focus on like visual style and then after maybe I'll think more about like subject. For visual style, I'm noticing a lot of bright colors. I notice that in a lot of these illustrations particularly um, and that's you know one of the reasons I was also very drawn to this abstract painting was was for the color palette. I do notice that a lot of this is more illustrated so I you know I don't think that any of this is like meant to be hyper realism. Um, so I think that could be another thing to write down as well is more illustrated. I do notice that for some of them there's a mix of, of shapes, um, more like abstract shapes. So for example here in the detail of this illustration as well as this one, um, there's an abstraction combined with, with some of these more um, real life scenes. One other thing that I'm noticing in terms of visual style is this use of perspective that can really be seen in this one as well as um, this one here. and. I mean, quite a, a lot of them, 
Okay, so now that I've thought about some of the, the visual themes here, I'm gonna start thinking about the subject matter. One thing, just, just by looking at it, there's a lot of people. A lot of art usually does include people, but I also know that some people prefer abstracted art, some people prefer art with animals or nature. In almost all of these, there's a person included or some sort of human experience included. So I think I'm gonna take a note of that as well human experience. Something that I mentioned earlier, which I do think is still very present here, is a mix of, of surrealism in a lot of these. One last thing that I'm noticing as a big theme in terms of subject matter is this hint on storytelling. Okay. I think we have a good base for this next part, which is thinking about if we were to title this as a gallery, if this was a gallery that we went to visit, and let's just say I curated this gallery, what would I title it? And that's really hard, but I do think it's a really good exercise that Kelsey is proposing. Okay, I'm, I have some ideas, but to be honest, they might all be terrible. Human windows, that's a title I can think of. And the reason why I thought of that was, you know, focusing on, on the fact that these are all focused on the human experience, but windows because it's like each piece is giving you an insight into a different lived experience or almost like you're looking into a certain type of world. Another one I can think of is people, perspectives, and portals. I was trying to make it sound catchy with the, the three P's, <laughs> um, but kind of similarly different lived experiences and, and the way that all these pieces transport you to a different place and time. I also, what I really like about the, the word portals is that I feel like it touches a little bit on the, the surrealism. Um, it makes it a little bit more like sci-fi, if that makes sense. My favorite one would have to be People, Perspectives, and Portals. So I think we'll make that the title of this. And I think that name is actually starting to grow on me. I think that's actually a pretty good title for this gallery. A goal without a plan is just a dream. I now have tons of examples of art that inspire me and some key insights to take from it, but how can I turn this into a clear plan to follow? So this is the goal tracker where I've been um, keeping all of my goals for the year. As you can see, I have some different focus areas. I think everything related to art, I'm gonna have it live under career. I have a few goals here already um, related to art, but I think this is a really good opportunity to take what I've learned in this exercise, this newfound kind of art style to go for and turn it into some very clear action items so that I can start to really develop this art style. One thing that I can clearly see from all the work is a lot of people are featured, a lot of um, different human figures, and though I feel pretty comfortable drawing a human figure, it's still not something that I've really mastered yet. I want to create a goal around taking time to um, really study the human figure and make sure that I feel so comfortable with it. Very natural for me to keep on including humans in my pieces. Something else that I think is going to be really important is really understanding color. I can see that in a lot of these pieces and a lot of pieces that I admire, they really have a really great mastery of color and color theory. And so I really love to create a goal in here around perhaps mastering color. And so here are those um, two new goals that I added. Because a huge component of all of these pieces is storytelling, I think it's gonna be really key to have a good understanding of current issues, of things that I'm passionate about, because without a story, there really is no like art piece in this lens. Two projects that include a form of storytelling. And then for each of these goals, we can kind of go in and start breaking it down to what that really means. So for create two projects that include a form of storytelling, the actions that I'm gonna to take to actually be able to accomplish that is probably one hour a week interested in. Um, probably add more actions as I start to see this, this goal develop. For improving human anatomy drawing skills, I think one very clear action I can take is draw 
one portrait a week. If I can draw more than one, I think that would be even better, but we can start off with one. Another thing that I think would be beneficial is probably taking some type of human anatomy drawing course. I think that can mean anything from simply finding like a series on YouTube for me to follow all the way to maybe if, if there is one that seems, you know, really high value, um, I could also enroll in like an actual class that I pay for. And then the last goal that we have is become skillful in color theory. And some of the things that I've seen that folks do in relation to color theory is to do color studies. I haven't done too many color studies in, in my life and color theory is actually something that I, I struggle a lot with. So I think a good action would be complete one color study a week. And then maybe another one would be to play around with some of the colors in a current painting and swap them out. So something that I see a lot of illustrators do is because their illustrations are, um, you know, malleable and they can interswap the colors, I see that it's very easy for them to do different color combination. Um, I think it would actually be very helpful for me to do an illustration like that where I can swap out the colors and test different things. Instead of just a color study, I could also create an illustration using three different color combinations. Amazing. So now I have those three new goals that I can strive for this year and some actions to get me started with it. I'm now at the end of this process and I'm feeling pretty confident. I now have a clear direction of what I'm going for as an artist to guide my actions moving forward. There's no time like the present, so I'm gonna apply this strategy to my next piece. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.